All right, welcome back to uh, History and Coffee. And um, <clears throat> first of all, I want to thank um, like all these uh, new subscribers and um, all the uh, you know positive support and all the crap that my videos have um, gotten recently. So uh, you know, welcome to the channel. And um, I got a tripod, so. Um, <laughs> We're classing to join up. I wanted to make a video today to just sort of talk about this issue with um, entrenched uh, myth and misinformation when it comes to these uh, percussion revolvers. What got me started on this, but first of all, I want to say um, I'm not like a tactical uh, gun guy. You know, I'm not like one of these YouTube people or whatever, you know, like I'm a historian. And then my practical application knowledge when it comes to firearms is from my time in service in the army. And then uh, I have a few sort of maintenance classes here and there. Like I do own and, and shoot um, modern firearms and things like that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm a history guy. Um, so you need to take that into account. Um, when I made my um, the, the video about using uh, cap and ball revolvers for self-defense, what I did was I took my knowledge of history and my knowledge of the practical application of firearms and I like put them together into a little opinion sandwich, which I then put on a plate and was like, here you guys enjoy my opinion sandwich. And most of you did, and I appreciate that. Um, but again, that is an opinion. Um, you know, it's a, it's, I'd like to think it's a pretty well-educated opinion, but it's opinion. So, the issues that I run into is, when it comes to these percussion revolvers, there's a lot of things well, one, there's a lot of things that we just don't know because essentially the guy who, who wrote most of the contemporary books on especially like cults and things like that turned out to be something of like a, a, a con artist. So we don't really know what of his is true and what's not, um, unfortunately. And there's definitely, you know, videos about that elsewhere, the whole uh, scandal with that. I'm not even going to say the guy's name because I don't. You know, I haven't looked into it enough to really have any kind of opinion on that. Um, so it's really sort of uncharted territory when it comes to this stuff. Um, and then the other issue is there's so many things that have just been repeated so many times that people take them as truth. Um, and where I ran into this now, because most of these things sound sensible enough when it comes to these percussion revolvers, most of the sort of the repeated things that everybody just, you know, knows. Oh, everybody knows that, you know? But if if you take, you know, they, they seem to sync up with the practical application of firearms, but then if you, if you look at history and how these things were used in the past and things like um, early ordinance reports and things like that, they don't, they don't jive. So that was what got me investigating it. And um, the only sort of, the most up-to-date information we have on percussion revolvers is from the 30s and 40s. Um, there's a couple books written back then that are pretty good. Um, a lot of them don't really cite sources and things like that, so it's a little bit difficult. But um, Elmer Keith, um, who I'm sure many of you know, um, if you're involved in, in firearms in any way, you know, he was the father of the Magnum cartridges, just absolute legend. Um, he wrote pretty extensively about the, uh, the Colt Navy and the 36 caliber because he actually bought his when he was a young man off of a, um, a, a Civil War veteran who was part of a Confederate cavalry unit. And um, he, he sat with the guy and uh, basically got his story and then he wrote that down. And what's, aside from it being a fascinating, uh, a fascinating read just for the story, there's a lot of... Um, information about the practical application of these revolvers in there. So it gives you a pretty good idea. Um, so I would definitely suggest um, 
looking at stuff like that and really looking at this basically what I want to do going forward is some some I, I want to experiment with these things I want to find out clean slate like let's say that you know most of the information that's floating around now is not true it might be it might not I don't know um, I'd like to look at the historical context and I'd like to um, get out there and um, test some of this stuff out. I'd like to induce um, some chain fire conditions. I'd like to see, you know, what the real cause of that, because I've heard um, it, it comes from the front and you have to grease your, your chambers to prevent it. I've heard it comes from the back and it has to be, um, it's from loose fitting caps. I've heard that it is um, a plasma discharge from the explosion of the black powder. I've heard that, you know, a tight fitting ball can prevent it, you know, that a lubricated ball can prevent it. Um, and chain fires were definitely a thing. There, people have them all the time now. Um, they had them all the time back then. Um, and it'd be nice to get to the bottom of what's really causing it. And I need your guys' help to do this. Um, I know that a lot of you who watch this, you own percussion revolvers, you shoot, um, get out there and try some of these things out. Like, let's say I go out to the range and I, you know, try testing out some powder charges and things like that and say, you know, the original instructions from Colt stated that you were to fill the, the cylinders to the top with powder and then compress a ball on it. But in modern thinking, People think that'll blow the revolver up. They think that that'll stretch out the um, the, um, the the locking wedge, the main the main wedge, and cause cylinder gap to expand. And I, we need to find out if this stuff is true or not, instead of just repeating it over and over again. So, you know, if you if you're into this subject, like let's 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 all get together. Let's start from the ground and just work our way up. And you know. We'll, Clean slate. Um, well, the cat's excited. <laughs> yeah, let, let's get together and let's let's try to you know either prove or bust some of these myths once and for all. Um, so yeah. Oh yes. Um, fact checking. So I'm going to present some things um, that might of course not go along with some of this stuff. And some people, you know, they're gonna disagree with me, they're gonna think I'm wrong. Uh, I can promise you that anything that I will present here will be something that I have tested myself and researched myself. Um, I, the only thing I ask is if you disagree with me, tell me why um, and tell me like in what way, you know? Don't just be like you're wrong because I've gotten that a couple of times. Uh, I need to know how I'm wrong so that I can learn. You know, that's the whole point of this thing is learning. So, yeah, so that's the plan going forward with these percussion revolvers. Um, you know, let's get out there and bust some myths. And um, I've also got some great um, history content uh, coming along. Um, some stuff about um, the origins of uh, the Civil War. Um, I've got a video planned on uh, Doc Holliday. Um, I've got a video planned on Crazy Horse. So if you like those, um, stay tuned. And uh, you know, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.